Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 19th of August 2019 and the time has just gone 11.55 British summer time. Uh, this week we've seen a fairly positive start to the to the European session. Uh, there's been a few things going on. Uh, the, there is talk and speculation that Germany um, will um, pursue a stimulus package of 50 billion euros should this see fit, should, should the... Um, should the German economy uh, continue to kind of head down the the, the, um, the the poor growth route that we've seen recently? The German finance minister is talking about potentially having a stimulus package of up to 50 billion euros. Now, admittedly, given the size of Germany's economy, 50 billion euros isn't a whole lot of money to stimulate the economy. But the fact remains that the, that even even that the German politicians are discussing this as an option really goes to show how serious they're taking this, the situation and obviously anytime we ever have a kind of instant sort of stimulus from other governments or central banks it usually is done in a number of rounds um, also over the weekend we've heard from the people's bank of china uh, and they announced plans to actually reform the, the lending market uh, essentially they're looking to looking to making to make borrowing cheaper and the idea is of course if companies can borrow uh, at a cheap rate, they're more likely to, likely to borrow and to spend and to invest in the business and help the economy push on from there. Um, what we've seen this morning uh, from, the, from the Eurozone was that CPI was actually revised lower to 1% from 1.1%. And the decline in CPI can highlights, um, highlights the, the fall in demand. The, also, the core CPI was also revised lower. This really kind of underlines the kind of falling demand within the eurozone. This increases the kind of chatter about the European Central Bank uh, having some sort of stimulus package uh, next month. Also, uh, the price of oil is higher. Uh, there's tensions in, in the Middle East. Um, there's a report report of a drone attack carried out by um, by the Yemenis um, on uh, Saudi Saudi oil uh, oil, um, Saudi oil, oil plants. Um, one of the issues that's been hanging over of the, of the financial markets the last few weeks and months has been present the trade spat between the US and China. Uh, the two sides are due to meet next month, but uh, more recently we've heard from President Trump who said that he's, like, he's not, yet, not yet ready to make a deal. Looking ahead uh, at, the, at, the, at the week's events, if you go to our website cmzmarkets.com and under insights and then under news analysis you can find uh, the bulk of the updates that myself and my uh, fellow market analysts produce. Uh, looking ahead to tomorrow, we have first half figures from Persimmon the UK home builder. Uh, on Tuesday, we have second quarter figures from Home Depot over in the US. Wednesday, we have the, the minutes from the latest Fed meeting. Uh, on Wednesday, we have second quarter numbers from Target over in the US. On Thursday, we have the flash manufacturing and, and service PMI reports from France and Germany. That'll be closely watched because, like I said, the, the speculation at the European Central Bank could announce uh, some stimulus package, stimulus package uh, at the September meeting. On Thursday, we have the Jackson Hole Symposium. Traders are going to be listening out for any, any any clues in relation to what the Federal Reserve are going to do come September. Uh, there's been a lot of talk and speculation, and the bond markets are seriously pricing in uh, interest rate cuts from the Fed, from the Federal Reserve. But the raw economic the raw economic indicators are actually fairly positive. Retail sales are decent, unemployment is low, and wages are uh, are comfortably out, outstripping inflation. But the, the financial markets. Um, are very much he heavily pricing in um, loosening of monetary policy by the Fed in September. On Thursday, second quarter figures are from Gap, uh, the US fa uh, fashion house. And on Friday, we have retail sales figures from Canada. And that gives indication of, um, of whether Canadians are going out and spending money or not. It is worth pointing out, we did see a tick up in Canadian unemployment uh, recently. So taking a look at some of the major markets, we had a, put, we had a positive um, day on Friday, but by and large, it was a very negative week for global equity. So take a look here at the FTSE 100. We can see that the fairly severe losses incurred in the middle of last week, but we have been pushing pushing higher. So we're not too far away from the this red line here, which is a 200-day moving average, and that comes into play at 7,194. Broadly speaking, if you're, kind of, if you're above the 200-day moving average, that's seen as kind of positive market sensitive sentiment, and if you're below it, it's seen as kind of negative market sentiment. So we're kind of right on it. So... The markets are recovering ground, and there's still a lot of fear going on out there. But the last few days, we have seen the market push move to the upside. And if you can hold above these levels here, in around the 70, 79, and kind of 7,000, 
if we hold above that kind of region there, it's like we could see the market push on a bit higher. And if you do manage to kind of take out, say, 7,200 just north of the, of the 200 moving average, we could be looking at retesting this area here, the highs of early the highs of early August, and that comes into play at just north of set of uh, 3,000, sorry, just north of 7,306. 7, and if you press on higher from there, we could be looking at retesting this blue line here, the 50 moving average. It acts as both support and resistance in recent months, so it might be an important metric in the in future. And that comes into play at 7,426. It's a similar similar picture uh, picture situation over in Germany, whereby the markets had a had a fairly severe sell off, uh, but, but in mid of last week, but have been kind of pushing higher and trading above the 200 moving average on the DAX, which is a uh, which is a um, good good new, well it, it suggests that the kind of sentiment is turning around, but you know we're still a long way away from the kind of highs of July. So if we can't continue to press on higher from here. We could be looking at retesting this area here in around 11,853. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at uh, targeting the psychologically important 12,000. If, however, the market market manages to turn over on itself yet again, we could be looking at back to this area here, 11,400. There's a bit of consolidation in that area only last week. And a move below that could take us back down towards 11,270. And you can spot here how it's not exactly a surprise that the lows of last week were in around the same lows that we saw in um, in, uh, in late March. So keep an eye out for 11,270. US markets are in, are in a bit better shape, but they're also um, kind of in recovery mode like how the European markets are. So take a look, at, starting off with the Dow Jones. So as you can see yesterday, last week rather, we saw a fairly severe sell-off in the US. But the lows of last week were as low as the lows of the previous week, uh, despite we had, a, we had obviously a dreadful day uh, on Wednesday, but the market has managed to regain, uh, move back above the 200 moving average. It has been pushing higher, and we recouped a fair bit of the losses that were incurred last week. And if you can manage to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this area here in around 26,400. On a few occasions, that area acted as a, as, as a resistance, so I might do so in the near term. And if you, if, you, if you do have a size of break above that, we could be looking at retargeting this area here. In that, um, this area here is the coincides with the 50 moving average, and that's in around 26,625. And it's only really if the market kind of turns over on itself and it goes back below this, this red line here, the 200 moving average, which coincides with the psychology important 26,000 mark. It's only really if you have a size of break below that, then we, we begin to think that, you know what? The white, you know, the more recent downward trend is still very much in play. And if you go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards 25,200. This kind of zone down around here. Take a look now at the S&P 500. It's a similar situation whereby the S&P 500 did occur a pretty brutal loss last week in the middle of uh, last week, but we have been gaining ground. And we have managed to actually pull back a lot of the losses that were incurred uh, on Wednesday. So as you can see, the market's been pushing higher the last few sessions. And if you can press on higher from here, we're looking at targeting this general region here with this uh, trend line, with this line, this um, line is in play. Uh, and that comes into play just at uh, 2,952. It's also almost coincides with the 50 moving average, this blue line here, which as you can see acted as but resistance and support not too long ago. And if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it will be so in the future. So if you can press on higher from here and we can take out this area, then we can become more confident that the recent sell-off has come to an end. And we could even be lucky at heading back up towards the kind of 3,000 mark. If you do see the market turn over on itself again, we could be looking at heading back down towards this area, this uh, trend line here. If you go all the way back from February 2016 and draw to the lows, of, uh, of November 2016, you get this trend line along here. On a few occasions uh, in the last number of months and last year or so, it did manage what well, was a fairly significant um, for a fairly significant line in that it acted as support and resistance on a few a few occasions. And, so, and if you can manage, if you do manage to turn around itself on again, we could be looking at finding potentially finding support in around this trend line at 2,850. And a break below that could take us back down toward this red line here, the journey moving average which comes to play just south of 2,800. 
the gold market, as you know, the kind of major beneficiaries of the recent sell-off in uh, an uncertainty in global equities, a mixture of the flight of quality factor, but also if the if Fed is very, very worried that the U.S. are going to cut interest rates um, in uh, next month, that softened up the U.S. dollar and in turn made gold even more attractive because gold is quoted in U.S. dollar. So gold only last week pre- printed fresh six-year highs since we've been doing that quite a lot recently. So it's in a very solid upward trend. Um, there's a we can see that the market after printing a fresh six-year high on the Tuesday hasn't quite has been, has been drifting a small bit lower since then, but still very much in the upward trend. And if you can fall a bit further from here, support could be found in around the kind of 1480 mark, or perhaps even down this region here in around 1453. So buying another dip has been a fairly popular strategy in recent months. Uh, so if we do see a move to the downside, we might see fresh buyers enter the fold. If the wider upper trend does continue, which is looking likely that it will, given that we've been hitting six-year highs, multi-year highs quite recently, we could be looking heading back towards the recent high at 1535, and a move beyond that could take us up to 1555. This a level last seen um, in February 2013. I'll take a look what's going on in the oil market, starting off with French. So as I mentioned. Um, only been a little higher today, but the wider tr- trend has been has been quite poor. So if we take a look at the price action since April, we can see that it's been a, the oil market has been steadily moving lower, and particularly since July on Brent, you know, we've seen a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, and a lower high here. So it's very much in a downward trend. And I think in a wider downward trend does continue. We could look at retesting this area here in around fifty six dollars a barrel, or down towards fifty. Just, just shy of $56 a barrel in around $55.93. And if we go below that, we could be looking at heading back towards this area here, down around $52. Uh, if you did manage to kind of press on higher from here, this blue line here, um, we could see on a few occasions the market uh, didn't, wasn't actually because perfect resistance, but there was a few occasions where the market really couldn't get that far beyond the 50 moving average, this blue line here. And also the, the trending moving average comes to play as well. So in around the kind of 63 mark or the 64 spot 56 area, these areas could act as resistance should we see a push higher in the in the oil market uh, on Brent. I take a look at WTI now. So so as you a similarish picture with WTI. So particularly we can see here since um, since July. A lower low, a lower high, a lower low, and a, another lower high. But we, this could be a case of the market still remains below, just narrowly below its 200 moving average, this red line here, and that comes into play at 56 spot 11. And essentially, if you can hold below, if you continue to hold below that, it's likely that the kind of recent downward trend is going to continue. And if you move, move lower from here, we could be looking at heading back below $54 a barrel, this area here. And move below that, below that could take us back down for this area here in at 50 down at um, 50 spot 36. If you do manage, you're going to press on higher from here and retake the trend moving average uh, on the oil market. Uh, keep an eye out for this area here, the 100 moving average in at 58 spot 58. We can see that there was some consolidation in around that, that, that uh, price metric not too long ago, so it makes it more likely um, that, that that metric could be important in the future. Take a look now what's going on at the euro versus the US dollar. So it's a fairly clear and obvious downward trend in the euro versus the US dollar. It seems to be a fairly slow move to the downside. As I was saying, there's a lot of speculation that the ECB are going to have some sort of stimulus package uh, next month. Inf- inflation and core inflation in the eurozone have, uh, have, uh, have been revised lower. Germany had a posted negative growth last week. Things aren't looking too great for the single currency. And essentially, if we continue to press on lower from here, we could be looking any back down towards the psychologically important 110 mark. And if we do manage to bounce back on euro dollar, we can see here on a, on a few occasions very recently, this will, one of the moving average, this yellow line, and the blue line, the 50 moving average, both of these metrics are kind of almost like overlapping each other. This area here has acted at resistance, so it's possible that we could find some resistance come into play from the same area in around one spot 12, 40, one spot 12, 50, this, this kind of region here. And it's only really if you go have a size move beyond that, 
could then we could begin to think, you know what, maybe the recent downward trend has come to an end. I'll take a look finally now at the pound versus the US dollar. So we've been a very clear cut downward trend on the pound versus the US dollar. A lot of weakness in, in sterling at the moment, uh, well, especially well, well, last week at least. Uh, we've seen a bit of a turnaround uh, the last few, last few sessions. Uh, it's largely driven by the uncertainty in relation to Brexit. Some of the economic indicators from the UK have been strong. The job is straight low. Earnings are respectable. Um, retail sales can be better than expected. But the uncertainty in relation to what would happen if the, in the event of a no-deal Brexit has been really kind of weighing on the pound. So it's been more the possibility of political outcome rather than the economic indicators that have been driving this. But if you take a look at this price here, a lot of negative news has been, has been, has been priced in. We kind of didn't get quite down to the psychologically important 120 mark, but we got reasonably close to it. And we can see here on, on Monday last week, there's a fairly long wick on this candle here, uh, this, this positive candle. And it comes at a time when you have quite a few red candles pre preceding it. And usually if you ever see a long wick on a, on a candle, that's, that's, that's a, a point that, that, that can be a sign of indecision. Not said that the market's going to entirely turn around, but it's just indecision. And if you've had a, quite a few heavy losses beforehand, and now the market appears to be decisive, this could be a sign that the market isn't going to recoup some of the recent losses. And as we can see here, we've kind of gained a few higher highs and a few higher lows. So this could be a case of the market looking to kind of recoup some of the ground that's been lost in recent weeks. We could be looking at heading back towards one spot 22. Or we could be looking at heading up back towards one spot 24. But obviously, if the wider downward trend continues and we take off the recent lows, we could be looking at heading back down towards one spot 20. Uh, before we go, if you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on your reviews. Thank you very much.